Hey Sainers, welcome back to the Saints TV YouTube channel. Hope you're all having a great week so far. The BNF, as we all know, was Monday night. Cal Wilkie takes it out ahead of Jack Sinclair. And in third place was someone that was pretty much ignored the entire night. And a lot of sort of news, a lot of hate has kind of um, ensued off the back of that, directed at the club. And I feel like I'm, t I'm doing more videos just talking about all this crap and not about trades and, and the club itself and who we've actually got there. Everyone's just so fixated on little petty things like a player that doesn't go to the best and fairest. Now, um, there's kind of uh, two sides to this. You know, Josh Battle just didn't want to go and he didn't attend and that looks bad on the club. I mean, both situations reflect poorly on the club. That's what at least the media is telling you. And then on the other side, people are saying that St. Kilda sort of uninvited him. They, they, they encouraged him not to attend. They didn't invite him, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And um, some people have taken issue to that. Now, the funny thing is, in the days since that, it's gone both ways. West Coast with Tom Barras. He went up and gave a very, very good speech. It was all class, handled it really well. Finally, to the boys, um, I just want to say how much I love you boys. You know, there's such a great group of lads and, you know, we'll be friends forever. I really, truly believe that. And, um, you know, that, that's separate to football. That's, that's our mateship. And I just want to say I'm going to miss you boys and I, I love you dearly, uh, but not quite as much as my two little boys. So... Hopefully one day you can respect my decision and I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone and um, it's all love for me. So thanks very much. And then today we see some tweets and it's around Richmond and obviously they're losing Liam Baker and Shy Bolton who both finished equal fifth. They, I don't know why they had a speech for fifth place. That's very odd. I don't know if, if it wasn't players that were leaving. I doubt they even had that. But they gave speeches and it was some of the worst viewing you will ever see. Incredibly cringe. That, to me, kind of justifies not having Josh Battle attend. Yeah, I just want to thank, thank my teammates, thank my coaches. Um, thanks my partner, Sina, back at home. Um, she couldn't be here at the moment because i um, got another one on the way. So... Um, it. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's it for me, so thank you. Um, nah, nah. I'll speak for me and Shay. Um, nah, actually, uh, it's been a great year and I appreciate everything that the, uh, the club's done for, for myself and, and my family over, over the years and this year and um, I'm looking forward to what the club does in the future and um, yeah, I can't wait to to support it, and yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be out great looking from afar. So uh, thank you for everything, and take it easy. It's like any situation. If I chose if I chose another agency in my full time job over where I'm working now, I'm not gonna go to the eight the the old workplace's Christmas party and drink and pretend everything's okay. I I don't think that it's that big of a deal. This has happened many a year. And for some reason, this year is the year that it's a major problem. Is this the first time that a player's chosen to leave and not gone to the BNF? I doubt it. I doubt it. I think it's happened many times. But for some reason, people have taken issue to Josh Battle not going to our best and fairest. First of all, Kel Wilkie was interviewed on Andy and Gazy's uh, podcast on SEN the other day. And, um, or yesterday, in fact... And he said exactly this. He said, Josh Battle is a good friend of mine, and I know it was a tough de decision for him to make. I wish him all the best, but I guess it might have been a bit awkward if he was at the best and fairest last night. And uh, a comment under that says, the under or non-report reporting on this side of it is just wonderful. It's a story when St. Kilda asked him not to come, but it's not a story when his teammate says it would have been a bit awkward if he did attend. Doesn't that just summarize it right there? If Kel Wilkie's saying... If our, if our vice captain is saying that it would have been awkward in the room, he is speaking on behalf of not just himself, but also a lot of other players in that room, perhaps all of them, that might have felt a little bit uncomfortable that Josh Battle, a player that's chosen another club, he's chosen less money, keep in mind. We offered him a million dollars for next season, much more than Hawthorne. Supposedly, he told the players and the coaches that he was going to stay, and then 24, 48 hours later, he's out the door. 
So he lied to them. And they clearly feel like there might be a bit of a problem there. So obviously, I don't know the ins and outs. I'm just reporting on what has been reported. So take that with a grain of salt. But if he said that he was staying, if he told the coaches he was staying, and then he had, and then backflips on that, and he's out the door, I don't have any problem with that. It's funny. No one talks about us delisting Seb Ross and then giving him a goodbye package and interviewing him, and it's all good there. Clearly, we respect our players. It's not across the board. They pick one thing, and they don't pick the other. Seb Ross, we delisted. We we had the option of keeping him. We said, no, you're done, mate. Thank you for your time. And he still attended. He still spoke well. He was interviewed well. And um, I don't think there was any problems there at all. No awkward silences in the room. Josh Battle must have been a separate case. Must have been something specific that happened that not anyone knows. And it's between him and his player and his teammates, or his ex-teammates now. And he chose not to go. And and to be honest, I don't think Josh Battle would have even wanted to go. Has anyone actually asked him? I mean, if I chose another club, even at my local level, like not even AFL level, but local level. I'm not going to go to my other team's best and fairest. And imagine, he would have had to have given a speech. And I'm pretty sure that what Shy Bolton and Liam Baker did justifies that you cannot have a player leaving give a speech. Because what are they going to say? They're not talking about next season and I had a great season. It's all, I'm going to miss you. Like, like Liam Baker's is like, take it easy. 30 seconds in, he's like, take it easy. That's all he said. And he's going to enjoy watching Richmond from afar. Are you joking? Like, you, you rip into one in Shy Bolton, Liam Baker for going and then giving a speech. And then people are ripping into us for not inviting Josh Battle, which avoided that situation because he finished third. So it's firing me up a little bit, but the the hypocrisy is ridiculous. And to be quite honest, we're becoming a ruthless uh, sort of uh, organization. Now look at what Bassett had said. Look at what Ross had said. I mean, even Ross mentioned the fact that the AFL should do the right thing and give us the compensation for battle. Would have been awkward saying that with battle in the room. So, um, and to be honest, I mean, I went last year to the BNF and, and Gresh was there, right? And this was like maybe three or four days before the whole Essendon thing kind of took place. And he was pretty quiet and he didn't look that comfortable. And he probably knew that he was out the door. I mean, it's different with battle because he chose the club and we kind of facilitated Essendon. Um, although Gresham did say that he wanted to play in front of big crowds. So I saw it firsthand last season, knowing Gresh is probably out the door. He didn't look that happy. He didn't look that comfortable. And um, maybe it was a learning curve for the club. Maybe they're gone. If you're, you, you know, you're in, you're in a hundred percent. If you're not, you're out the door. We don't want to see or hear from you. So I personally don't mind the ruthlessness about it. I don't think it's amateur hour like people are documenting. He doesn't need to go to the BNF to farewell his teammates. He can go and give them a call in his own time. They can have dinner. They can go for a jog on the weekend. They can grab a cuppa. It doesn't matter. It's none of our business. They can handle their relationship. We are a club. He's one player. He's not the whole club. He's one player and he's chosen another club. So why would he come to BNF? I think it's really clear cut. You know, my mind is logical. I think if you're in, you get to come. If you're not part of the St. Kilda Football Club anymore, you're not part of the St. Kilda Football Club anymore. As, as great as you've been, as much time as we've dedicated to you and you've dedicated to us, that, that kind of goes out the window. It's a breakup. I wasn't going to do a video on this, but it seemed like it's just grown and grown. And then when I saw the Shy Bolton and Liam Baker speeches and I thought, here we go, like that's proof in the pudding that what we did was, was probably the right thing to do. And I don't think it's going to hurt Josh Battle's feelings, not going to one B and F. And um, I don't think it's amateur hour at all. So comment your thoughts, Sainers. Let me know what you think. Um, and yeah, hopefully the next video, it'll actually be about trade talk and it'll be about actual football. Um, it seems like there's a lot of little spot fires that are popping up around the club. Maybe that means we're making a little bit of a stir and it doesn't seem like we're as irrelevant as people think because we seem to be talked about every single day. Not really in the, the most positive light, but nonetheless, we're being talked about. So hope you enjoyed the video, Sainers. Please like, comment, subscribe. And as always, go you mighty Sainers. See you guys.